Good morning, good or morning. good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Wes Harville with Jackson and Perkins, and I have Diane Summers, the president of the American Rose Society with me. How are you, Diane? I'm doing well, Wes, and it's great to be back chatting with you about roses. And welcome to our topic today, which is summer rose care with a focus on best watering practices. You know, when we talked earlier, Diane, when we were preparing for this, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, should we focus on drought or should we focus on summer watering? And I, I think it's important to point out here that we're talking about summer watering going forward and that we might have tips uh, for uh, certain areas of the country because uh, Diane is living in the northern part of the country and I'm living in the south. So we'll try to, to get to all the points here on and give you a little bit of regional information. But uh, some of the things that are specific to the South is that it can get warm enough or hot enough and it can get dry enough that roses can go semi-dormant. Uh, this is an expected thing. Uh, this is a thing you can manage through if it's, it's one of your goals. There are people that don't have this goal in mind and try to manage through that dormant period. But you can expect rose blooms during that time in the South to diminish in size, have fewer bloom cycles, a reduced rate of growth. And in that case, they need less water and less fertilizer if you're willing to let them go to their semi-dormant state. But I think Diane has some different experiences in the Northern part of the country. Uh, that's right. And we all need to remember that while we're talking about regional differences, mother nature actually controls this. And so for example, in the Wisconsin area and some of the northern areas of the country, we have actually had a very hot introduction to summer this year with, with temps in the mid 90s. And so we actually, you know, experienced some of what Wes, you were just mentioning as, you, as it relates to your warm weather climate. So we always need to think about what's happening in our garden and walking your garden daily and understanding the impact of different weather situations. Of course, in our northern climates, we will have plant, uh, plant growth slowing down as well. And for us, we tend to see some spider mites as those temps start to heat up. And if you look underneath your leaves, it might look like a pattern of very, very, very tiny um, sand granules. And the easiest thing to do is just to take a water wand and wash the bottom of your leaves off. What you'll see on the top of your leaves is some yellowing and maybe some dropping of the leaves. Um, again, a good sign that perhaps you've got some spider mites easy to wash off. When we hit temperatures uh, of 90 degrees or more, very limited amount of black spot is appearing in our gardens. We don't have the humidity that you might have in the south. Um, uh, as, as much, right? And so uh, we actually almost have this period without black spot. Whereas I know in some of our Southern climates with high humidity, you gotta be really careful about watering and the timing when you do that. And we'll be talking about that um, in, a shorter, in, in a short period of time here. I'd also mention that uh, something very new for us this year that Rosarians were experiencing was some of the bleaching out of the colors in our roses. And we would see some of the, the new roses that were just popping open would perhaps have like a dark yellow color, but those that have been there a couple of days were almost white. And it was very fascinating to see. And it was truly the impact of that bright, bright sun that we don't typically experience early in our gardening season. We're gonna talk more about water, but water is absolutely important. If you think about the early spring temps, uh, the nice, um, you know, 70 degree days and a lot of rain usually for us in the, in the May and June timeframe, everything is growing and everything is very lush. And when we start to hit that July, August timeframe and we have less rain, you do start to see the roses kind of becoming, you know, a little bit of a dormant period. And so you wanna make sure that again, you're providing that water that mother nature did in the early part of summer. It is interesting listening to you talk because the, the, there's so many microclimates, it's very difficult to put everything into just one region or that region, but you were talking about your weather. I would say for the last two weeks, I've, had, I've heard thunder every afternoon and I've probably gotten rain uh, three or four times a week 
Uh, and right now it's uh, 10 in the morning here and I've got 80 degree temperatures and 83% humidity. Right, and, and that humidity along with that rain and, and water sitting on your leaves for six hours plus is just, the, is just a perfect opportunity for black spot to start to take over in your garden. Yep, and that's a good time to consider air circulation when you're planting your garden. You know, the, the more air circulation that you can get in those roses, the faster those roses will dry out under uh, any conditions. That's correct. Well, some of my goals, you know, when I'm thinking about my climate is that I'm willing to let my roses go dormant in the winter, in the summertime, because I'm, I'm not after that show quality bloom or that uh, bloom cycle every, every week or every month during the season. So my goal is to be water efficient. I want to get water to the roots. I don't want to have that water loss through evaporation and my goal is to build a strong, healthy plant so that when that fall season comes along, it's, uh, it's ready to explode and have the bloom cycle that I'm looking for. You know, I'm kind of jealous of that because our blooms are in the summertime, right? So, and we don't have some of the heat that you have. So that's the, that's the period of time where our northern climates we're enjoying all of the color in our garden and all the blooms. So we don't actually see that type of a dormant period that you do. And in fact, we are fertilizing throughout the summer months. We're watering throughout the summer months. We're enjoying our roses. And then when we hit the fall, late fall, you know, end of September, early October, then, you know, then we really don't see that much more bloom in our garden for the year. Well, fall is a big time for uh, rose blooms. Like I mentioned, it's a big time for planting in the South. But uh, one of the things I've learned over the years is that even within your garden, even within your 20 by 20 foot plant or our planting area or in your one or two acres, the soil can vary dramatically. So it's important to be aware that the watering is dependent on soil type, the weather, rose variety, the age of the rose, all those things need to be considered when you're when you're watering your plants. Absolutely. And, and you see that in this slide that we've pulled together for, for the audience here, where we were looking at all the different options that we know people use uh, to keep their roses well hydrated. And to your point, there's so many variations just based upon the temperature, the soil, even the plant itself that you really need to understand your own garden climate. Um, what, what normally might work for you in, in early season for watering might not be appropriate. It might not be enough for your roses when you're hitting a really hot cycle, especially if you're growing roses in containers where you almost have to water daily um, to make sure that they're getting enough moisture so that uh, they can continue to grow, that they can continue to take up the nutrients from the soil. Uh, if you start to see your plants wilting, that's a good sign that it maybe needs some water and you want to take care of that right away. Well, in really warm areas, a lot of water can be lost to evapotranspiration or just the heat evaporating the water before it gets into the soil. So the goal is to get that water into the soil and one of my favorite things is soaker hoses. Uh, soaker hoses are uh, perforated, uh, similar to your normal hoses that you can uh, wrap around the base of the plant. You can add mulch over the top of that plant and that all of that moisture can go into the soil zone. You do need to be careful when you're using soaker hoses to make sure that you have them on long enough that they're getting the amount of moisture that the plant needs. Cause it's gonna be, it's gonna come out slow, right? You're not gonna necessarily see it as you would from any overhead watering. And you just need to make sure again, that they're getting enough water. And you can do that very simply, right? By just, you know, digging into the soil a little bit with your finger and you can tell if there's moisture around the base of the plant or if again, you need to add uh, more water. And one of the things I'll help you with that is a timer added to that. So it takes out uh, some of the, the actual physical work 
But uh, I agree. I've seen people wrap uh, soaker hoses in a five gallon bucket and turn them on for periods of time and and see how long it takes that bucket to get a gallon or two gallons in it and gives them an idea how to set their timers. That's and, a great idea. Yeah. You know, as we were mentioning before, you know, I have roses in my garden that I haven't watered this year, but I also have roses that I water every day. And the other thing that you can do is obviously make sure you've got mulch on your on the soil in your garden because that's going to also help retain the moisture in the soil. Uh, you know, in some of the very hot climates, what I see from our rose members is that they actually use shade cloths in the summer when you have that really you know high heat, high sun kinds of uh, kinds of weather condition. In the, in the north, we don't we don't typically use a shade cloth at all. Um, but again, this year again, we saw some interesting um, impacts to our blooms because of the direct sun we were getting. Well, I think one of the things that people run into in the deep south or in the southwest is the duration. You know, we're talking about hot temperatures, but we're also talking about the duration of time that the sunlight is on the plant and that the the heat is. Uh, you know, over 90. But uh, roses love the morning sun. And uh, if you are going to protect them with cloth, you know, protecting them from the afternoon sun is the best. And we're looking at, you know, maybe from four, five, six in the afternoon, still looking towards that around eight hours of sun a day. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned before, um, to be careful about when you're watering. Uh, this is really kind of interesting. I was again, chatting with some of our Rose members from across the country. And an uh, individual who lives in Arizona uh, told me that she really likes to water at night because um, that works the best for her and the water has more of a chance to, to stay on the plant. It's not drying off immediately because of that bright sun as we've been talking about. Now, uh, in my area of the country or in the very humid areas, perhaps Florida, Shreveport, Louisiana, where our headquarters is, you would never want to water at night where you've got water sitting on those leaves again, because that is an opportunity for black spot to form. In areas of the country that have you know, very little to no humidity, um, that's not an issue for them. I like watering in the south in the mid afternoon. Uh, my goal there is not only to get the water that the plant needs, but also help cool down the soil during that hottest part of the day. Yeah, great idea. And, you know, don't be afraid to overhead water uh, your roses. In my past garden, I had about 400 rose bushes and I just used the um, sprinkler method in my garden. I would turn it on and uh, wash those roses, give them a nice bath. And I think they really enjoyed it. Again, you wanna do that early enough in the day so that those leaves can dry off. They've got the sun, they've got the breeze going on. So, you know, before five o'clock at night, um, and, and you should be just fine. And yeah, I think roses like having a little bit of baths every now and then. Sure, those leaves are like skin and those pores get clogged up and they need help cleaning up. But we talked a little bit about the shade cloth. We talked a little bit about uh, the duration of sun and uh, we've mentioned that roses do prefer uh, sh sun in the morning and shade in the afternoons and the hotter climates. But when you get into container roses, that adds a whole new dimension because not only is it a smaller uh, soil mass, so it can heat up faster, but it's also going to need more water. And that depends on its location and the pot size and the type of soil that you have. That's right. And also think about even the color of your container. In the springtime, when I order bare root roses, I will plant them in just black plastic containers, pots. And I do that because then the sun is hitting them, it's warming up those roots, and my plants are gonna to start to grow a little bit faster. But when I go to either then plant them in the ground or I plant them in a more decorative container, if I'm planting them in a container, I tend to shy away from something that's very dark colored because that is really gonna to start to bake those roots in the summertime when they're getting more sun. And so by having a lighter container, a lighter colored container, that just helps the plant to, you know, helps us really, as we're looking to prevent some of those heat stresses that are going on in the summer. Of course, when you have something in a container, you can move it. 
And so sometimes you have that option to move it into a shady area um, if it's in fact getting too much sun, but clearly roses still want a minimum of six to eight hours of sun a day um, in most cases, right? Of course, if you're in the desert and it's 120 degrees outside, you need to, to plan accordingly for that. Uh, watering more frequently, again, is really important. So check the watering, check the soil in your container. Typically, you're gonna use a lighter soil mix when you're growing a plant in a container. And you wanna make sure that again, there's adequate water because that's gonna have faster drainage in your soil. Um, watering daily, sometimes even maybe more than once a day might be needed. So again, that's up to your container, the material you're using um, in that container. And that pot is a more intense growing environment and needing more water. Just keep in mind too, that things that you add to improve the soil like fertilizer and amendments will get used more quickly with more frequent watering in a pot. Absolutely. And I also put mulch on top of the soil in the container. It's, it looks nicer. Um, and again, it'll help with that, um, with that keeping that soil just a little bit um, less hot and, and help to keep the moisture in the container. And I know we're talking about roses today, but these are tips that can be followed with just about anything you go. I don't want you to feel like roses need all this special care. It's just, we try to grow roses in all kinds of climates and we just need to plan accordingly. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the fun thing is you can actually grow roses, any kind of rose in a container. In our climate, uh, that typically is a five to 10 to 15 gallon container, just depending upon uh, the size of the plant. But you know, I have friends that grow climbing roses in containers, for example. But, you know, that's a another whole topic that maybe we'll explore at a later time. Well, Diane, I want to thank you again. Uh, this is getting to be a regular thing for us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I can't think of anything better than talking about roses other than being out in my garden, uh, working in my rose bed. So uh, enjoyed it immensely and I look forward to our next chat. And don't forget jacksonperkins.com for information, uh, how-to videos, blogs, uh, and, and our call center is always there standing by to answer questions. And I know Diane has some resources at the American Rose Society. Absolutely. Feel free to, to contact us at rose.org. We have consulting rosarians that are certified in every state of the country that can help answer a question that you have. We have local rose societies also across the country where you can uh, come to a meeting and, and ask your questions there and learn more about growing roses. Well, thanks again. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.